Welcome to week four of financial accounting. So I'm going to go over a few things today that you need to know for your assignments coming up. Um, first of all, in week four, you have your explore section. Like always, there's three chapters of reading and some extra reading um, links here. Videos, presentations, and some additional resources. All of these will be helpful when you are trying to answer your questions. Um, with your readings in chapter eight, you're going to be talking about current liabilities and fair value accounting. So what are liabilities? Liabilities are debt. This is who, what money you owe. This is cash that needs to be met during the operating cycle. Um, things you need to know about liability or things that you need to know, what kind of liabilities are there? Sorry, I just kind of tongue twisted there. What type of things can you owe on? First, you can owe on a line of credit. This is a, um, a prelude to a loan, such as a farm credit. So I can call the bank because I have purchased seed for $14,000. I call the bank and I say, I need to transfer $14,000, put it on my line of credit for me to pay later, which means it's a liability, because I need that cash in my checking account. Okay, so I've transferred ownership of that money, but now I owe it on my line of credit. You can also get a loan on a vehicle, um, such as a bucket truck or a service van. If you're a farmer, any land that you owe on, that is going to be a liability as well. Um, these are all going to be either a short-term liability or a long-term liability. Short-term liability are normally $10,000 or less, going to be paid off in a year or less. Credit card bills, um, let's say I had an $8,000 chemical bill um, for anhydrous to put in my corn. Um, then your long-term liabilities are going to be large equipment, land, buildings, that type of thing. You can also have liabilities for things such as taxes that are due. Each quarter, I need to pay sales tax because I charge sales tax to my um, customers who are commercial customers. I have to charge them sales tax on the labor that we do unless it's, unless it's a new um, building or um, other structure. So at the end of the quarter, I add up all the sales tax that I have received from my customers and I have to pay that then to the state of Kansas. That is a liability. It's standing there. It's sitting there ready for me to pay. Employee taxes, if I make out my, my um, guys' payroll checks, I am taking out, withholding their FICA, their Medicaid, Social Security, and I need to then pay the state and uh, federal government for those amounts. So I need to then have a liability payment so I can get that um, out of my books. Another one that is maybe intangible, you don't really have a dollar amount set on it, but you owe your employees vacation, okay? Those are intangible type liabilities that you may need to do. Uh, liabilities are first and foremost in chapter eight. Um, when you are purchasing something, you need to have a purchase agreement. This can be written or it can be verbal. And most of your liabilities are going to have um, an interest added to them. This could be a simple interest, which is the interest cost of one or more periods, and it's the principal amount stays the same period to period, and then that interest is added to it. This can be like a medical bill, a dentist bill, something like that, that they aren't going to compound it. The compound interest is what we are more familiar with, and these are going to be your credit cards. If you do not pay your principal, which is what you have charged to your account. You do not pay that, you're going to have interest added to it. Then, if you have the next month bill, you're going to have interest and the principal and then interest on that. So it keeps compounding, it keeps growing. Um, then in chapter nine, you're going to talk about long-term assets. Assets are things that you own, things that you could sell, or trade for cash, okay? We talked about short-term assets. Those would be such as um, supplies in your inventory closet, computers, um, a small ATV, 
a golf cart if you needed it for um, a golf course. Okay, those are short-term assets. Those are things that are quickly transferable to cash and you're normally going to have them paid off. Long-term assets are going to be those things that you need a loan for, such as your um, cars, your bucket truck, your land, a load of lime, whatever it may be. Now, whenever you have these long-term assets, it's important that you do not overstate on your financial reports of their full worth because each year you need to depreciate the worth of an asset. That will give you more accurate financial reports. Let's say, for example, I bought a livestock trailer for $5,000 for my farm. I have a life expectancy of 10 years for that livestock trailer. So each year on my taxes, I need to depreciate $500 from that asset. That will then give me a true value or a disposal value of that livestock trailer. So then if I get rid of it in five years, I have paid $2,500 in depreciate, not paid it, but it has decreased $2,500. And I, it's probably worth about that much as well. You try and get about where that worth is if you're to resell it. So your depreciation is the worth of an asset as it decreases in ages. And then you have a disposal value or a selling value or a salvage value. And that is the portion of your original cost, what you purchased it for, and how much you are able to recover it if you were to um, sell it. Okay, then in chapter 10, you talk about long-term liabilities. Long-term liabilities are going to be those things that you owe for that are going to depreciate. Chapter 10 talks about the different types of depreciation. There is some math involved here, so I highly recommend that you stop, use those applies, such as page 459, um, amortization. These, um, you are able to determine how much you're going to pay in interest if you know the present value and the time. So again, stop and apply on each of these different sections as you go through. There are also those review problems with the answers in each of your chapters. So you wanna make sure to go through those as well. All right, so what do we need to do for your assignments? You have two discussions, apply and evaluation again. What happened? I'm gonna stop sharing, maybe that's why. There we go, I'm gonna share again. In okay, discussion one is going to give you kind of like they have in all the other chapters where you have to determine which of these liabilities are the type of liability goes with which liability over here. So, um Liabilities are set by contract or statute that can be measured exactly. So on page 368, if you're looking at determinable liability, just as the term, and term says determinable, you can tell what they are going to be measured. What are they going to be at the end of your financial reporting time? This is going to be your accounts payable. What do, you, what do you owe for your trash? What do you owe for your credit card? What are you going to owe for your, um, your machinery payment at the end of the financial period? This is also your payroll. You know what you're going to end up paying to your employees. For your estimated liability, just as the term um, tells you, it's estimated. Page 373, these are definite debts or obligations, but the exact dollar amount cannot be known until a later date. Kind of like your income taxes. You turn them into H&R Block and you hold your breath, hoping that you don't owe 
too much money at the end. I'm doing that today, as a matter of fact, not H&R Block, but to my accountant. So you don't know quite what it's gonna be. When you go and pay your property taxes, yes, they send to you your statement, what you need to take to the, po to the um, courthouse, but prior to that, it just depends on the appraisal rates and the tax rates, and you never quite know what it's going to be, plus a depreciation if it is property taxes on vehicles. Um, you can also have a type of liability called commitment, and these are legal obligations that does not meet technical requirements for recognition as a liability, such as leases, and you'll talk about leases even more um, in your apply section. And then the last liability type that you're going to consider for these different liabilities is a contingent liability. This is, can be found on 376 as well. These are non-existing but potential liabilities because it depends on future events that will happen based on actions that have already taken place. It's kind of confusing, but think of it as a lawsuit. So you may have done work for somebody and they didn't like it, so they are going to come back on you and file a lawsuit. They want $10,000. Okay, that's something that could happen into the future based on an event that has already taken place. Income tax disputes. They say you owe $12,000 on your taxes. You're not going to pay that. You want them to realign re it, try and look at it again, and you're disputing it. You still are going to owe those taxes, but it's in the future. You don't know when it's going to be. So those are contingent. You don't know if you're going to owe on it or not, as the name indicates. Okay, in discussion two, this is going to be about long-term assets. Like I mentioned, long-term assets are things that you own. Assets can be tangible, intangible, and natural. Go to page 402, and they will describe what these three types of assets are. And also look at the definitions of amortization of intangible assets. Okay, when you're looking at intangible assets, you're going to have a different variety of depreciation than you would with an actual car or land, something that is able to touch. Okay, so copyrights, patents, those are going to be intangible assets and they have a different way of amortizing those. It also discusses this more on page 422 of your textbook in detail, more in depth. So I recommend going to page 422 after you read about the different types of assets. And then lastly, for your apply, I recommend going to page 447 through 449. And on this, it's about the same for your leadership and your healthcare majors, but you're going to be looking at this Geneva autom Automotive. They are leasing their inventory. I'm sorry, they are leasing their mortgage. Uh, their mortgage is where their building is at. It's a structure that they are using for operations. And they are not depreciating these because they are on a lease, okay? Remember with leases are different. They are going to be commitments, but they're not owned by the company. So the stockholder's equity is being given, or it's, it's a liability due, but it's not accurate because of these, uh, the, the assets versus the long-term, as, the assets versus the liabilities long-term. So you need to answer the questions in a one to two page paper and Look at how they could better their financial health if they were to report these leases in a different manner. Okay, so look at the types of leases, look at the long-term leases and the company's debt to equity ratio. And again, one, um, 447 to 449. And there's a section about focus on international practices on page 449 that will also give you some insight on this as well. That sums up week four for your Zoom session. If you have a questions, please contact me um, through Messenger in our class, or you can text or email me my private as well so I get to you sooner. 
Um, everything should be updated. One thing I always want you to make sure that you're doing is replying to your peers' discussion questions. That is worth points. There's grading criteria on all of your assignments. Look at those. Make sure that you are following all of that criteria. Uh, make sure your discussion questions and your replies are lengthy enough to discuss what the um, answers need to be. I understand some are just filling in the blank or giving a short answer, but some of them also want to be elaborated. This week's um, key term, you need to go out and find the current upcoming due date for the tax refund or not the, ta the taxes to be submitted to the federal government. So the upcoming current year of the tax due date. Typically it's in April, but I want you to give me the actual day. All right. Have a great one. Bye.